Well, hey everyone, how are you doing? Well, today I'm reviewing a very famous UK university for which I've got like tons of requests. So here it is. Today I will review the top UK university, Oxford University. The University of Oxford is roughly 922 years old, making it the second oldest university in the world. And in this video, I will give you an in-depth view of the university and will decode the academic, social and financial aspects of the university with my star ratings. And then I will offer you the most important tips and strategies to get into this university. Well, these tips are especially for postgraduate students and undergraduate students also. Oxford is very famous for its English program and Oxford is the great place to become an author. Oxford has more published authors per square mile than anywhere else in the world. Famous author tied to Oxford includes author of Lord of the Rings, Alice in Wonderland, The Chronicles of Narnia and many more. So let's look into University of Oxford. Hi, I'm Shirish Gupta and I empower people to hack their success, rise above the challenges and confidently create an extraordinary life they deserve. Oxford is a college at public research university located in England. It was established 925 years ago in the year 1090. That even sounds old to pronounce it. Yes, the university is almost a century old. The second oldest university at that time, right after University of Bologna, Italy, that is still operational. University of Oxford is located in Oxford, a city in England. It is close to Birmingham, Bristol and London with nearly 100 km maximum distance. The location is known for its rich history and true English architecture. And not just that, the industrial side of the city is well developed too, including IT and manufacturing in the lead. All in all, Oxford is a diverse and historic city and a major British and European centre for arts, science, technology and innovation. The university does not have a campus. Instead, it has 30 different colleges under its name. Each one has its own dining hall, bar, common room and library, and lots of college groups and societies. It's not a campus, it's a complete city. The architecture is mostly ancient British Gothic style, which was popular during that time of its establishment. Around 14 colleges have similar orientation and rest are a mixture of modern and old architecture. Too. The most popular majors at Oxford include Humanities, English, Biomedical Sciences, Medicine, Biology, Law and Electrical Engineering. Although I'm not a big fan of judging a university solely on the basis of the ranking, Oxford is also one of the top 1% universities in the world according to all the major ranking services. Alright, now let's move on to our next section, talking about the right fit, starting with academic fit. At Oxford, you can literally study everything under one roof. A common misconception with the University of Oxford is that you go to different college for a different subject. Yet, the University of Oxford is a college at system. This means that you can study all subjects at one college. It's a tradition that has grown throughout the city, a university system where you will have all of your accommodation, food, lessons and sports team under the college you decide to apply to. Every student belongs to a college as well as a member of their own course department and the university. This means all Oxford students have the benefit of belonging to both a large world-class university and to a small, very friendly academic community. The courses here are generally three years in length, except few tech courses that are four years format and language degrees that can go up to five years in length. There are also options available for students to choose from. Engineering and medicine make up the most popular courses after English. When it comes to English, we look for all things for Oxford, be it books or a dictionary or anything. So it should not come to you as a surprise that English is one of the top majors at Oxford and have been for last almost 100 years. Early years of your course would involve more compulsory and core modules. Later you start choosing a variety of other courses too. Unless you're a language student, studying abroad is not an option many look for. Oxford offers the chance to produce your own research and to work alongside other researchers at the university for people who show interest in research. Oxford follows three major kinds of teaching formats. Number one is tutorials, where there are few students with professors discussing on a topic. The conversation is a core teaching method used in these. This helps students receive individual feedback on their work as well. Second form of learning is through weekly classes in the form of webinars, labs and practical sessions. Some courses have more weekly classes to allow students to develop the specific skills they need for their subject. For example, medicine, science courses and languages will have more practical classes every week. Third form of teaching is lectures. Well, these cover important topics of your subjects. The science and technology subjects tend to have more classes in lecture format as compared to others. Now, faculty here is definitely super amazing. Most of the professors are involved in research but are quite accessible to students as well. 
You can have one-on-one -on -one meetings and discussions with the professors through appointments. Even though professors are busy with research, they do take out time to take entry-level classes as well. So it's definitely a great place for you to study. As discussed earlier, Oxford uses a tutorial method for undergrads and a mix of lecture and weekly classes for postgraduates, along with some tutorials as well. The classes are small and intimate, where students are involved fully all the way. So keeping all this thing in mind, I would like to rate Oxford with 5 stars on academic difficulty and quality level, where 5 is the highest level. Well, after academic fit, let's move on to social fit. Well, Oxford is a college town where students from two major universities make up to almost 40,000 of town's population, which makes it all under 30 years. There's a huge party culture, including pubs and clubs. All the undergraduate courses are full-time, and on average, one student will spend around 40 hours a week studying. Everyone manages their time differently, making sure that they can fit in all their studies, hobbies, and interests. Learning how to manage all your commitments is an important part of managing your time. For postgraduates, both part-time and full-time options are available. Oxford collects all the college universities, so all in all, it has about 25,000 students with about 12,000 UGs and rest are PGs and PhDs. There are more than 10,000 students, international students, that make up to almost 45% of the total school population. That's really very diverse. The Graduate Accommodation Office lets and manages rooms, flats and houses on university-owned sites in and around Oxford City Centre, which are available for full-time graduate students. Graduate students use both university-managed housing and independent housing as well. Undergrad students are offered college accommodation either on the main site of your college or in a nearby college dorm. All the surrounding population will be freshers too. The college encourages at least one year of accommodation for all who are joining for the first time. Most students, after one year, try to live outside the campus, which is equally lively, but can be a little less expensive. Students who live out still have to use all of their college's facilities, including meals and washing machines. Students say the dining choices range from edible to absolutely excellent. There are many options available, both on campus and off campus, for all students to enjoy. Oxford is not just good at academics, but at sports too. Almost 280 Oxford students have taken part in Olympic Games, winning 167 medals, of which 84 were gold. Yes. Well, there are many sports available for you to get involved in. Many clubs ranging from theatre, business and day-to-day -day skills are available too. Oxford offers a competitive academics and a good social life as well. I would like to give it 4 stars out of 5 on the quality of life at Oxford. Well, now let's look at the financial fit. Oxford falls in an expensive school life. But the expenditure depends on the program. Well, you can expect anything between 27,000 to 39,000 pounds in annual tuition fees. For home students, the course fee is about 9 to 10,000 pounds. The housing and dining may fall in about 10 to 12,000 pounds for most. As far as financial aid is concerned, merit scholarships are available, averaging about 10,000 pounds. Athletic scholarships are also available. It has a lot of scholarship opportunities available. So I would like to give it 4 stars out of 5 on the financial fee. Well, Oxford balances academic, social life, and a faith in all-encompassing college experience based on the care of the whole person. So after exploring the fit, let's move on to the most curious section on how to get into Oxford. Oxford is committed to recruiting the best candidates each year from all backgrounds and identities. Its environment is friendly and inclusive, and goes without saying, competitive. The first thing that Oxford looks for is the academic ability and intellectual curiosity. On top of it, your ability, enthusiasm, and commitment. Oxford is one of the elite colleges that are highly selective. The acceptance rate last year was about 17%, and mostly ranges from 8 to 15% only, with a graduation of 99.9%, .9%, which is best when it comes to top colleges. Well, now let's take you know my admission advice to get an admission to Oxford. The ideas I'm going to share now are not available anywhere. It comes from my decade-long experience working with students for career and college admission. Well, getting admission in Oxford is not easy and requires a lot of hard work on different levels, I'm sure you have guessed it by now. The expectation runs high when it comes to selecting the new recruits every year. And for one of the very best in the world, you cannot expect less. Be ready with everything. One year prep is not going to lead you anywhere. You need to start your college prep early, as soon as possible. And this is surely my first tip for you to start your prep early, as early as two or three years prior to your start date. Next is to make sure that you do exceedingly well on your academics and GPA. Oxford values your academic performance a lot in your high school or college years. 90% and above in undergraduate admission and GPA of above 8 and PGs is a standard norm at Oxford. 
Try to perfect your grades as Oxford, as it really wants its students to excel in academics. You must understand the applying process well to get admission to Oxford. And I will be defining the entire process in a very simple way after these tips. So make sure to understand the process well. There are a lot of moving parts and requirements for admission to Oxford, especially for undergraduate admissions. So give yourself ample time for applying. Another thing is your statement of purpose. It is really important. With all the top students applying to Oxford, there is very little to choose these two top students based on the academics alone. So writing a high quality essay for either your undergrad degree or a postgrad degree is an absolute must. You must talk about yourself and your passion and how an education at Oxford can help you become better and be better prepared for the next phase of your life. It's super important. Research is also an important part of the university. It is known as world leader when it comes to research. Most of the university resources are devoted to cutting edge research projects. So a genuine interest in research will come in very handy. If you have any research projects, just make sure you highlight them at relevant places when you file your applications. Oxford conducts interviews as well as a central part of admission and you must be prepared to deliver your best in the interview. Work on your interview skills and communications so you can leave a positive impression on your admission. Oxford conducts interviews for both PG and UG programs. Well, now I want to talk about the admission process for both UG and PG students and I would say grab a pen and a paper so you write down all the tips and tricks here. The first thing that I get asked a lot is how to select a college under Oxford University's 30 colleges. The answer is simple. If you have time and knowledge, research on different colleges and pick one that suits you best. If you can't, don't worry about that. Just apply as an open application. To me, there is very little to choose from within these colleges. They are all excellent. So if you don't have a specific preference, just use an open application and let the university pick the best college for you. In general, when it comes to recruitments, all colleges operate on a common framework prepared by the university that ensures unbiased and consistent treatment of all candidates. The process for an undergrad student is to specify a college preference on the UCAS application, but you can also make an open application. For postgraduates, students must complete department-specific applications through the Oxford Graduate Application System. And you too have an option of choosing a college or letting Oxford decide the best fit college for you. So don't fret too much about which college. Your main goal is to choose a department and a major and apply to the department and let them choose a college for you if you are unsure about that. The application process for undergraduates has four steps for applying. It's quite simple but requires great preparation. Well, if you are interested in Oxford, please listen to this carefully. Number one, students must apply through UCAS, which is a central application system for UK. And the deadline for apply to Oxford and Cambridge is October 15th, one year prior to your start date. The deadline is this early because Oxford does not accept any external standardized test, but has its own test for different programs. Which brings me to the second step of UG applications. Many of Oxford's courses require applicants to take an admission test and they use these tests to choose between all the excellent candidates who apply to study at Oxford. For instance, if you plan to apply to economics program, you must take a thinking skills assessment test or a TSA. For computer science, you must take a mathematics admission test or MAT. These tests are usually organized across the world in different centers in the month of November. Along with the UCAS, you must register for your test before 15th of October. The third step is written work for some academic major. Check if your major requires you to submit a written work, and if so, you must do it by November 10. The fourth is an interview, which is generally the month of December. And after your interview, you must wait for the results. For postgraduates, application is through the Oxford Graduate Application System. The applications are department-wise and consist of submitting SOP or essays along with your letters of recommendation. As I said earlier, make sure to write a high quality SOP. And again, if you are not sure how to, Take some professional help. Oxford also needs an interview, which is generally face to face. So if you get an interview call from Oxford, be ready to travel as well. In the end, to conclude, if you're hardworking, okay with an intense workload, self-sufficient tutor, interested in research, and you can work independently, Oxford is for you. Well, thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Please make sure to support my work by liking and sharing this video and also subscribe to my channel by hitting that bell icon. Thank you once again and I'll be back with another amazing video for you. Till then, this is Shiri signing off. Take care and have a good one.